Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about Radical's Fast Facts. So I've got two rounds for you in these Fast Facts. If you've played Fast Facts before, you know exactly what the expectations are. It's all about answering problems in 10 seconds or less. So follow along with me. Get a pencil and paper out for really quick math or do it all in your head the best you possibly can. Pause if you need to, of course, but see if you can obviously keep up with the time or rewatch this and see if you can play with it again. All right. So let's take a look. I'm going to be giving you 10 seconds to be able to simplify a radical with just numbers only for right now. Now remember, the whole process is always figure out the biggest perfect square that divides into that radicand and then break apart that radicand into the perfect square and the other number that it multiplies by the other factor and simplify it. Okay. If I give you the square root of 36, you would just say 6. But if I gave you the square root of, let's say, 18, you would want to think of the biggest perfect square that goes into 18, which is 9. 9 times 2 is 18, so it's radical 9, radical 2, which just becomes 3 radical 2. So follow along with me. Ready? Round 1, radicands that are numbers. So here's our first one, square root of 25. This one should obviously be very, very easy for us. Sorry about that. You don't even need to really think for this one. And the answer is just simply 5 because 25 is a perfect square. But the rest of these are not perfect squares. Ready? Radical 27. Thinking what's the biggest perfect square that goes into 27? Okay. Hopefully, we knew that it was 9. So radical 9, radical 3 is how you'd break apart radical 27. Square root of 9 is 3, and then you would just leave radical 3. Next one, radical 75. Okay, let's see how we did. This becomes radical 25, radical 3. 25 is the biggest perfect square that goes into 75, which then becomes 5 radical 3. Next one, radical 40. Remember, you're thinking, what's the biggest perfect square that I know divides into 40? Okay, let's see how we did. Should be radical 4, radical 10, which becomes 2, radical 10. Next one, radical 18. I actually did this one as an example right before we started. You're thinking about the biggest perfect square. Okay, so that one should be radical 9, radical 2 which becomes 3 radical 2. Next one, radical 200, the biggest perfect square that divides into 200. Okay, should be 100, so radical 100, radical 2, which becomes 10 radical 2. Next one, radical 45, the biggest perfect square that goes into 45. Okay, it's 9. So it's radical 9, radical 5 becomes 3 radical 5. Be careful on this one, radical 32. Biggest perfect square is not 4. It's actually 16. Radical 16, radical 2, which becomes 4 radical 2. Now, if you were to break, radical, break apart radical 32 into radical 4, radical 8, you can take the square root of 4, it's 2. But look at the radical 8. You can still break apart radical 8 into radical 4, radical 2. Eventually, you'll still get that same answer of 4, radical 2. It'll just take you more steps. So I'll always suggest to you, always think about the biggest perfect square that divides evenly. Same idea with 72. Don't get tricked. Don't do 9 and 8. Okay, good. It's... 36. So that becomes radical 36, radical 2, which is 6 radical 2. Last one, radical 150. Biggest perfect square that goes into 150. Okay, it's 25, 25 times 6, which becomes 5 radical 6. All right, round 2, radicands that are variables. Okay, radicands that are variables. So, if I said to you, take the square root of x, just the square root of x, sorry, square root of x, 
Hmm. The answer is just the square root of x. We don't know what x is, so if I just say the square root of x, it's just simply the square root of x. However, next problem. Okay, the square root of x squared. What would be the square root of x squared? Well, the square root of x squared is x. But here's the deal. Any time when we're taking the square root of variables with an exponent, we go from an even exponent, like 2, to an odd exponent. Okay, 2 goes to 1, because you're really just taking half of the even number. We put absolute value bars around that expression. We have to make sure that whatever we're saying the square root of x squared is, is the positive value of that x. We don't want the negative value because you can't take the square root of something and have it be a negative answer. So anytime we go from an even exponent, this is the rule, even exponent, and it becomes an odd, that's when we use the absolute value bars. And you're going to see a couple special, special cases of those throughout. Next one, square root of x to the third. Now, can't take half of 3, but we can break 1 apart. So square root of x to the third, we break 1 away from it, so it becomes the square root of x squared, square root of x to the first. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of x to the first is just square root of x to the first, really. Now, any odd exponent, we always break 1 apart from it. Okay, so 3 minus 1 is 2, and we can always take half of 2. Now, the reason why there's no absolute value bars here is because it started odd. The rule is only when you go from originally even to odd. But if I start odd, then I never need any absolute value bars. Square root of x to the fourth. This one's easy. Square root of x to the fourth. What do you think? x to the second. Even to even. No absolute value bars needed. Square root of x to the fifth. An odd exponent. Remember what you need to do here. Okay, so this becomes x square root of x to the fourth times square root of x to the first. We break one away from the five, make it a four. Square root of x to the fourth is x to the second. Square root of x to the first is just the square root of x. Square root of x to the sixth, a nice even exponent. Remember the special rule that has to happen here, though. Okay, square, I'm sorry, x to the third, and it's the absolute value of x to the third. When you go from even to odd, notice we just took half of 6 is 3. Square root of x to the 6 would be x to the third. Even to odd gets those absolute value bars. Square root of x to the seventh. Hopefully you're following this pattern from before. Everything is about patterns. Okay. Break 1 away from that x to the seventh, so we get square root of x to the sixth, square root of x to the first, which becomes x to the third, square root of x. Square root of x to the 8th, this is an easy one. The even ones are always so nice. So nice. The easiest. That would simply be x to the 4th, even to even, no absolute value bars. Next one, square root of x to the 9th. This is our last odd exponent problem, guys, so hopefully you followed the other pattern from before. I would break 1 away from that 9, so it becomes square root of x to the 8th, square root of x to the 1st. Square root of x to the 8th is x to the 4th, and then just square root of x. Last one, square root of x to the 10th. The even exponent ones are always so nice. Just watch out for that special rule. x to the 5th. Because I went from even to odd, I get those absolute value bars. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Watch it again. See what you can learn. See what you remember how to do. And hopefully it helps you. Thank you.